Okay, Eureka Springs Channel. Uh, we're here at the carving of the Ozarks here festival, and I'm here with you. And you are you are. Hi, I'm Kelly Dawn. Kelly Dawn. So you are a an artist, a carving a, artist, a chainsaw carver, painter, just a little bit of everything. Yeah. So you know, it's kind of unusual to see. I, I hate to be stereotypical, oh, no. but I, it's very unusual to see a woman carving artist. So what's that been like for you, this journey to get here? It's been exciting. It's been very exciting. I feel really fortunate and blessed to be part of this. The carving world's really a family, and um, there are quite a few female carvers. I'd say that we're only about 25%, okay. and it's a sisterhood, and we all kind of work together and everything. And one of the funniest things is when people come up, they say, did your husband carve that? And I say, no, you know, no, he didn't. In fact, you know, you know, no. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So how does how do you get started in this art? Did you did you start out whittling or how did that begin? I think it's a little bit different journey for everybody. For me, like I said, I've always been an artist ever since I could hold a crayon. I did portrait work and just you know ceramics and painting and things like that. I really hadn't done much in regards to wood. I always had an appreciation for it. Bought a set of carving bits a while back. They were hand palm carving tools, and you don't have to use a mallet with those. You just kind of push them with your palm, okay. and um, just had them for years. Had them in a tote moved and just didn't even think anything of it and a few years ago I got passed on the highway by a truck load of garden gnomes including a 10 foot tall gnome and you see something like that's that kind of scary I just had 10 foot tall gnomes a little intimidating <laughs> you see something like that on the highway to really get your your attention and uh, we ended up pulling in the same gas station and having a little conversation like this and got on Facebook and found a whole world of art that was being made it wasn't just bears and log names there was gnomes there was mermaids like one of my pieces that's here today there was you know pieces that look like statues and things that you'd find over in Europe and all the museums and things. So, I mean, just full blown out, you know, figures and action pieces and just anything you can imagine we can make in wood. You know, there are some incredible pieces here, a lot of intricate detail. Some of them are just enormous pieces here. So, uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, the process itself. I mean, does it take a long time to do, you know, a piece that's uh, like what would be right behind us here is okay. a piece that goes way up in the air. Here. Right. And that's an Addition. It's, yeah. So, so tell me about that a little bit, a little closer. Okay. So it's, sorry. It's, a, it's a, how long does it take to do a piece of this magnitude here back here? Well, it all depends on the artist and their skill set and their ability. But like today, for instance, this was a one-day carving event. Yesterday, we did a separate piece, and this particular piece was done by one artist. He started out this morning. We started it up a little bit late, so it was about 8:30, 8:45, and then he was done with his saw work by 2:30. So this is a comp this is a competitive this, today this and yesterday. This particular oh, event okay. is a competitive event. Didn't realize that. Yeah, each carver does two pieces. They do a piece on Friday that's going to go for the auction, and okay. then a piece on Saturday also for the auction. Friday's piece they had a little bit longer for. They would blow the whistle at five, and that's when you were done. No wood could be removed from the piece at that point. They could add paint. They could do stain. They could do some things like that, but no wood, no sanding, no carving, nothing like that. This is almost like a sporting well, event, it isn't it? It actually is. It is, and you know when you come from a competitive nature, I've always done sports and stuff. Yeah. Like like that and it's fun and that's the other great thing about being a girl like I said is getting in there with the rest of them and you know moving those logs and slinging saws and and, and learning what the tools are called you know? <laughs> this is learning. cool this is really cool this is really cool well thank you are, well, are you from here in Eureka Springs or no are actually from? I'm from Sedalia Missouri okay. and um, but my grandparents they had retired down to Beaver Lake so I came ah. through as a kid and I just love the Eureka area and we've added different pieces of art throughout the community and just really networked found it great group of people here it is and just love really the great area. well thank you so much well, for thank you. a lot of enthusiasm i love this a lot of enthusiasm so come on out to carving in the ozarks uh, every year yeah, so this, every year so this it, is the 15th year, 15th year and um the auction's going to be later at four o'clock today awesome thank, thank you kelly you. Well, i am here with mr jim kelly uh this is a carving of the ozarks is benefited who benefits from this the fire department the volunteer department has done this now i think for the seventh or eighth year Okay. As uh, the organization, uh, David Blankenship gave it to that, us to use as a fundraiser, right? And we've used it now, and uh, we've split the profits. So the all the auctions items get split with the fire department, 50-50. Okay. So it's our main fundraiser for the year. Yeah. So we really count on this to uh, these guys carvers come in from several states away to help sure. us out and uh, make some awful nice carving. So we'll auction those off at four o'clock and. 50% of that's ours, 50% is theirs. So you guys have a lot of items that uh, are not funded and you don't have at the fire department that you're in great need of. Could you tell us a little bit about what some of those products and what some of those items are? Oh, it's endless on the items list and everything. And because we have the rural community and the city both, so the city's 
pumping in all they can too to try to keep us uh, going but we also need so much for the rural area that we get we get rural money in as well but there's so many items like um, our uh, self-contained breathing apparatus mm -hmm. that stuff is uh, several thousand dollars each unit and it's it has an expiration date it only lasts so many years and oh, we have wow. to get new ones to update to stay within the NFPA safety standards so that's just, a lot of upkeep the city's just spent a lot of money trying to get us up to date to have those because first and foremost we want our firefighters to be in protective good protective gear right. if we're going to go in and do those things so that's part of what some of it goes to but so there's several little small items wildland fire gear and stuff is very expensive but it's one of them that uh, can kill you real quick too so yeah. We have a lot of that kind of stuff we need on our real, real trucks, so we need it on several areas. Well, I've seen a lot of your firefighters around here volunteering their time and oh, making yeah. this work, so yeah. Yeah. it really takes a team, doesn't it, to oh, get all this together? It does, yeah. it does. It takes uh, several of them taking three or four days off work yeah. to come and do this to help make that uh, money back to help yeah. out on the shortcomings. Yeah, have you picked out your piece you want yet? <laughs> I usually, <laughs> I've already taken one home Yeah, earlier to, uh, yesterday. Okay, yep. good deal. Well, we appreciate you guys, appreciate everything I do and the services you give to our county. Thank you. Thank, Thank the you public so for coming out and supporting us and helping us out. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. All right, so I am here with another one of our carving artists here at the uh, Ozarks Carving Festival, right? So tell me your name, sir. Stephen Higgins, but if you ever forget my name, you can always say, hey there, handsome man, I answer to that too. And he's humble too, I love that. So, you know, this is a great piece you've done here. Tell me a little bit about this piece. I, I, there's so many things going on. Yeah, well, one of the first things that you should know is whenever I see somebody touch a piece, that means that they have to buy it. And I just saw you touch I nose. touch, I buy. Yeah, we got an auction here at 4 o'clock, and it's going to be uh, no minimum bid on the pieces. You show up and you try to bid on these. If you don't get them, we have this every year. It's Carving in the Ozarks. We got about 20 different artists that show up, and it's just amazing to see what you can do in one day. There's two competitions, one on Friday and one on Saturday. You have a log that's five foot tall, and you can have two slabs, a maximum of 24 inches by 72. So it's really your creativity, a lot of strategy that's involved. We have some heavy hitters that come out here, and we just carve our little hearts out, but the public is the one that determines the winners. So when you come out and bid, it's like voting. We vote with our dollars and everything else. Why can't we do it with wood carvings? That's how we determine who wins. So come on out, bid, buy, and you get to support the fire department as well. It goes to a great cause. Thank you so much. This is a great piece, and I promise I won't touch it again. I don't know that I can afford it, but it is amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you.